we've seen so far, the shaded region that we're rotating, it has been directly attached to the axis of revolution. However, if you have a gap between your function and your axis of revolution, so for example here in this first picture, if this is my shaded area, you can see there's a gap between the axis of revolution, which is going to be the x-axis, and this function. So what that's going to do is the solid of revolution then is going to have a hole in the middle. Instead of creating circular cross sections, which are disks, hopefully you can see that right here at the center of this cross section, there's a tiny hole being created by that gap. So when this shaded area is rotated, we're creating washers. We're creating cross sections that have a hole in the middle, kind of like a donut. Let's take a look in Mathematica. I've gone ahead and put in the two functions, which were x squared and the square root of x. And here's that shaded region. Now, again, what you want to picture in your mind is that we are rotating it. So this whole shape is now being spun around and it's creating a gap in the middle here in this distance from the blue function to the x-axis. I can plot the 3D shape and rotate it around for a bit and you can see how there is a hole on the inside. Now it's a little bit hard to see here why the the cross sections are washers, although you can see how we have sort of an empty spot in the middle. So if we cut through this shape, we would be slicing off donut shaped pieces. It's a little bit easier to see in these images where I've actually asked Mathematica to draw the washers for me. You can see how each washer has a certain thickness to it and that there is a hole in the middle. This is not a solid circular cross section. It's a donut shape, and there's many donut shapes that are stacked together to create this shape. Same thing in this image below. How would you calculate the area of a washer with an outer radius of capital R and an inner radius of little r? Well, I know what the area of the outer circle would certainly be. I could do the area of the outer circle, which would be pi r squared, and that's capital R squared. That gives me the area of the whole circle, which would be all of this, including that hole. Kind of looks like I put frosting on my donut. But anyhow, um, so this area is too much. We need to subtract off the area created by this little circle. So in other words, I am going to need to subtract pi little r squared to get the area of the washer. And we can factor the pi out, it's a common factor. So this is going to be how we calculate the area of a washer. So now if we want to calculate volume, if this is what our area function looks like, we're going to be integrating pi times capital R squared minus lowercase r squared. And we'll either do that dx or dy, depending on the orientation of the axis of revolution. So this is very similar to working with disks, but now you have two radii that you need to write in terms of x or y. All right, this example is not in your book. We're going to take the region in the first quadrant, enclosed by the y-axis and the graphs of y equals cosine of x and sine of x. And we're going to revolve that around the x-axis to form a solid, find its volume. Again, I would recommend getting a graph and make sure you're graphing in radians because in calculus we always keep angles in terms of radians. So here's what this graph looks like in Desmos. And because we're looking for the region bounded by the two curves and the y-axis, we're looking at this shape here. And remember, we're going to rotate this around the x-axis. So you can see we do have a gap from our shaded region to that axis of revolution, which means my cross sections are going to be washers. My volume formula that I would use is pi 
capital R squared minus lower R squared. And it needs to be in terms of X because our axis is horizontal, just like the X axis. So I need to figure out what my capital R is, which is my outer radius, and my little r, which is my inner radius. To do that, I'm going to find the curve that is furthest away from my axis of revolution on this shaded regions. I'm going to put a point there and connect it down to the axis of revolution. This is going to be my capital R or my outer radius. Next, I find a point on the boundary closest to the axis of revolution, such as this, connect it back down to the axis, and that's going to be my little r. So what you can see from this is capital R, furthest function to axis, is on this curve, and the curve that goes through one is your cosine curve. So my capital R is being controlled by y equals cosine of x. My little r is located on the curve that's starting at zero, zero and going up. So my little r is being controlled by the function y equals sine of x. So I'm going to let capital R equal cosine of x. I'm going to let little r equal sine of x. I substitute those into my integral. Don't forget that they're squared. And what are my limits of integration? I need x values because this is an, a dx integral. So I'm going from the left edge of the shape, which is at zero, to this intersection point right here. Now this intersection point, you can use your graphing calculator technology and trace to find it. You can do the same thing in Desmos. And it turns out that this x value at that location turns out to be pi over four. So I'm going to integrate from zero to pi over four. Now, since we're not here to actually practice integration, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end. And it turns out if you work through this integration, you will get a volume that is equal to pi over two units cubed, which is approximately 1.5 something. Okay, again, decimal approximations are fine. Last up is example six, which is from your book. We're going to find the volume of the solid form by revolving the region bounded by the graph of y equals x squared and the x-axis on the interval zero to one about the y-axis. So key information here is we're revolving around the y-axis, which means I'm going to need an integral in terms of y, a dy integral, if you like. So in order to figure out whether this would be a disk problem or a washer problem, I'm gonna to need to see the graph. So here's what the graph looks like, and I'm looking for the shaded region between x squared and the x-axis, which is here. And we were told to integrate on the interval from zero to one. So that only goes this far. If we were rotating this region around the x-axis, this would actually be a disk problem because there's no gaps between the shaded region and the axis. It's right up against it. However, in this particular problem, we were asked to use a vertical or y-axis axis of rotation. And you can see that from the shaded region to the y-axis, we're gonna have a gap. And if we're gonna have a gap, we're gonna use washers to integrate. Our volume formula needs to be the one for washers. So we're gonna be integrating pi, capital R squared minus little r squared, dy, because it's a vertical axis of revolution. So I need to get r, capital R, and little r in terms of y for this integral. To find capital R, we're gonna go from our axis of revolution to the furthest out point on our shaded region, which would be here. So that distance represents my capital R. 
my little r is going to go from the axis of revolution to the closest boundary of the shape, which is this little piece here. That's going to represent my little r. And we'll zoom in a bit just so you can see that clearly. All right, now I need to think about what's controlling the location of these points. Now notice something interesting about capital R. No matter what value, what Y value I chose, from that Y value to the furthest part of the shaded out region, it's always the same. And that's because this boundary is constant. It's always located at one. So sometimes you do get quote unquote lucky with your integral. In this case, capital R is going to always equal one. Little r, however, the distance from the axis of revolution to the closest boundary of the region, that does change length. It's shorter down here at the bottom, and it's a bit longer here at the top. Little r is changing its length, which means we need to write it in terms of the variable y. If we have a y integral, we have to make sure our equations are solved for x. So I'm going to take the function y equals x squared and solve it for x. I'm going to need to take the square root. Now again, when I take that square root, there's always a plus and a minus on that. So I have two equations here. I have x equals the positive square root of y, and I have x equals the negative square root of y. And we looked at one like this previously. So x equals the positive square root of y is this branch. And the other branch is the x equals negative square root of y. So my little r value is going to correspond to this particular function. So I now know capital R is 1 and little r is going to be square root of y. Now I'm ready to go back to my integral and substitute. So I'm going to have an integral of pi times capital R squared minus little r squared dy. What are my limits of integration? Well, they need to be y values, not x values. So I need to look at where this shape starts and where it finishes in terms of y coordinates. So it looks like it goes from zero to one. My shape stays entirely within those boundaries. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 1. Volume equals, I'm going to take my constant in front and finish simplifying. The integration at this point is easy enough. You should be able to work your way through it and come up with the final answer, which will be pi over 2, or approximately 1.5. We did a bunch of problems, but I think it's important to summarize uh, all that we've talked about. So in the next video, I'm going to summarize all this information about disks and washers and do some practice problems with you.